But one of the greatest things that I've learned is to not force anything. So I'm not going to say don't push for what you want, but if you really feel like you are dragging things up the mountain and everything's against you, like it's not the right direction. Like if there's anything that I've learned from being an entrepreneur, like the places that we're meant to go and the spaces we're meant to serve are going to flow. They're going to have like, um, they're going to have almost a momentum with them when we find them. Uh, and if we're trying to make them happen and force them to happen, like let it go because it's usually that's a piece of the greater idea that you're meant to be of service to. And I, it took me a long time to realize that I always thought like the one idea I had had to be the idea. Um, and instead they're all evolving into the idea. But if you keep holding on to that one piece, you could really lose a lot of time and also lose a lot of confidence um, and also confuse a lot of your prospects, prospective customers because you're, can be like all over the place. (laughs) Hey everyone, this is Devin Miller here with another episode of The Inventive Journey. I'm your host, Devin Miller, the serial entrepreneur that's grown several startups into seven and eight figure businesses, as well as the founder and CEO of Miller IP Law, where he helps startups and small businesses with their patents and trademarks. You ever need help with yours, just go to strategymeeting.com, grab some time with us to chat, and we're always here to help. Now, today we've got another great guest on the podcast, Sam Smelser. And uh, Sam was uh, or, or originally started her journey going into college and wanted to be a uh, singer and started as a vocal major. Um, also thought about being a IP attorney at one point, uh, which is a, a person after my own heart, and then uh, ended up uh, switching over to being a, a businessman or to a, doing a business management degree. Um, and then started working in the retail industry, uh, primarily in the HR d- their division of uh, helping to hire slash fire people, um, and then moved over to the softer side of HR uh, with uh, doing some training, um, and afterwards moved over to the healthcare industry before, before uh, deciding to go out on her own to to maximize employee engagement and uh, went on a journey to figure out uh, where to focus a business, and that uh, is uh, leads to where she's at today. So with that much as an introduction, welcome on the podcast, Sam. Thank you so much, Devin, for having me. It's really, uh, I'm excited to be here. Hey, excited to have you on and looking <laughs> forward to a, a great discussion. So so I just took a much longer journey and condensed it in the 32nd version of it. But why don't we uh, rewind and unpack a little bit and tell us a little bit about uh, how your journey got started going off to college, uh, thinking you're going to be a singer. Yeah, absolutely. I was actually very impressed by that, that you can do my entire life story like that. I think I need to take you on the road because that's pretty cool. Um, But yeah, I started, you know, back when I went to college. And even if you want to like reverse back to high school, like when they're trying to tell us like, what do you want to be when you want to grow up and trying to figure all that out? The only thing that I was really attached to was music and I loved singing and I love that concept of singing. And so it made sense for me to um, pursue a music degree and I leaned towards music business. So it was a music degree with elective studies in business because um, I'm terrified of being on stage. Like I, I'm really super shy and I could barely do talent shows. So I really kind of went in with like little faith that I could actually ever be a a singer, even though that's what I really wanted. Um, but I guess it kind of worked out in my favor because those business classes uh, came in handy later on. <laughs> so you started out wanting to be a singer, decided, okay, maybe switch directions a bit. I know you mentioned, you know, thought about even going to IP law before kind of settling on business management. So as you decide, and so, or kind of how did you decide to go into the business side of things? Because I mean, that's a fairly different skill set or mindset of doing business management, HR versus being a singer and both are aml- or, or great areas to go into. But what made you decide to switch over into that area? Yeah. So, um, so the first thing was that I was struggling to pass these sight singing classes, which are basically you have tests where they just put notes in front of you and you've got to sing a melody. And when you have uh, stage fright, that's even more frightening when you have a professor in front of you. And so I would routinely go sharp or flat. So I was really struggling to get the grades that I needed. The other piece of that is that because it was a music with elective studies and business degree, so being a music producer one day or something like that, um, 
I got exposure to business classes because they didn't have actual like music business classes. They just shoved you to the, the business building. And actually there, that's when I started getting exposure to like business law, uh, which is when I learned about intellectual property. And I really enjoyed that kind of black and white and being able to have systems and, and hold things accountable. And then I saw a little bit more of that when I started getting my management classes and the people theory aspect. So I really enjoyed those pieces. And so when I couldn't pass my tests that I needed for my degree, and I went to basically the registrar and said, if I'm going to transfer degrees, what would make sense? And they were basically like, you could do management or marketing, which was basically the 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 divide in the business department. Um, that's not economic driven that I would definitely not do. And uh, it was pretty crystal clear for me that I wanted to hang out with people. So I went the management side. No, makes uh, makes sense. So now you say, okay, gonna shift gears a bit, go in a, a different direction. So you go down the the management side, and so then uh, catch us up a little bit. So you you go down that route, and then it, it leads you to kind of going into graduating and uh, working in HR and helping to fire people. Is that about right? Yeah, that's a that's a great synopsis. But yes, uh, yes. So start going down the management degree. Uh, find that I struggle with certain business classes, as everyone does, and where I thrive is in the HR classes. Um, and then realize that I'm kind of got a brain that's built for the people aspect of business. And so started to just kind of run down this HR tunnel because I was so used to not being good at stuff on that music degree side that when they told me I was excelling at something in business, I just didn't question it and I just went for it. Um, and I was lucky enough, I was working actually for Lowe's, uh, the home improvement store at the time, and I was in their management training program. And when I said I wanted to focus on HR, they let me into their HR management training program. And I started to work in stores from an HR perspective very very quickly after I graduated, like within six months and uh, got really good at holding people accountable. Cause once again, I love those systems and I loved all that business law. And so being able to apply it and limit risk and liability, I thought was very fascinating. And so, yeah, I mastered the progression of performance of uh, performance management and uh, saw it as like a challenge, you know, when when an attorney or a superior told me that I didn't have enough documentation to terminate somebody. And so I literally spent the first two, three years of my career doing employee relations, heavily focused on taking care of employees that and I don't want to look like I was like the terminator targeting people, but uh, more so taking care of employees that I would say are kind of pains in the butts and hard to kind of move on. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so well i you know it's a job that somebody has to do and some people enjoy it and some people are saying man i don't like giving people bad news all the time and it's not uh, quite fun and if i remember when we talked a little bit you decided hey firing people for the rest of my career may not be the d direction i want to yeah. go and so i think you kind of transitioned or, or switched over into um a bit of the you know quote unquote softer side of hr where it's more of training and and helping yeah. people to improve as, as opposed to letting them go is that right yeah. So I basically started to get burnt out. Uh, I think it kind of like sucks your soul out a little bit every time you let somebody go and kill their livelihood. And uh, I transitioned to the softer side of human resources, which is training and development and supposed to be the proactive uh, solution to hopefully not get to those end roads. Um, and I basically got my master's of education in that area. And then I uh, switched industries and went to healthcare where I was doing that for a large like healthcare system. So with doctors and nurses and everybody that runs uh, practices as well as the hospitals. Um, and that's where there I was there for a couple of years doing that. Uh, and basically, you know, the next big catalyst that happened for me was I was sold on training and development because I thought this was this proactive solution that gave people what they needed to be successful and yet I realized that most of it was just kind of going through the motions sometimes to check some boxes. And I wasn't having the impact that I wanted to have. And it was that realization that kind of inspired me to start entrepreneurship. <laughs> no, it makes sense. So, so you, so back him just a little bit. So you go in, say, okay, start out. I'm going to go to the, you know, the softer side of HR, more enjoyable, not having to let people go and doing that and, and uh, kind of going to the skills training. And then at, at some point, I think you mentioned that you switched over to the healthcare industry or went in, in yep. the dire that direction. So what kind of made you 
take I don't know a detour, but take the the, the a, a new <laughs> direction of going into the healthcare industry, or what kind of led to that? Um, so you know, in human resources, when we embrace a niche, it's really hard to kind of change niches. So when you're labeled as somebody who just can hold people accountable and terminate people, um saying you want to go to the softer side and have a full-time position and excel at it, it's kind of a, a real change of skill sets. It's not that I can't do it, but it's more like I was back to setting as like a intern level, starting to build those skill sets again. And it, the position at the healthcare system that opened up actually was working with uh, one of my professors back in college that introduced me to the concept. So she knew me and I literally just applied, um, on a whim to kind of see what would happen. And honestly, if it wasn't working for her, I probably would not have changed industries. I had no real particular interest to work in healthcare, uh, but it was more so who my boss was going to be and what I could learn from, because it was almost like a guaranteed mentor in this in this kind of skill set. No, it makes, uh, makes sense. So now you, you see, so you go down healthcare industry, um, you know, make a bit of that or that shift or evolution. And uh, and at some point you kind of mentioned job satisfaction, wanting to go your own way, doing your own thing and, you know, and, and starting your own business. So it sounds like he kind of went in the direction of helping employees maximize their engagement and going down that. Now, how did you kind of land on a couple things, land on that area in general? And then what made you decide to venture out on your own or decide, hey, I can do this or maybe do it better or differently? Um, well, honestly, I just um, realized that I was just not satisfied with my work, like I was starting to check out and as somebody who does training and development with a specific focus on organizational development work, um, we're all about culture, we're all about keeping people engaged. And I'm the person who's facilitating those trainings and consulting work, yet I'm actively disengaging and becoming one of those employees. And I didn't understand why that was happening. Like, am I like broken? Did I have uh, like I, I just, it didn't make sense to me because all the boxes were checked. Like they offered great salary. They offered great benefits. Like all the things that were taught in school, I worked and achieved. And yet I was unhappy and I had a long way to go. Like I'm not anywhere close to retirement. Um, and so I, I remember I was just frustrated and I didn't even know what kind of job to look for because I thought it would just kind of keep happening. And my husband kind of threw out the idea of, hey, we're kind of in this situation where if you want to go out on your own, you can. Um, and I never thought about that. And then I thought, well, you only get that opportunity kind of once, you know, that somebody's really like your partner's 100% bought in on this to make this leap. And and then I automatically was like, well, what do I have to offer? Like, what would I even do? Like, I don't like, like I didn't have entrepreneurial dreams. And so I kind of clung to this employee engagement concept of basically, hey, I'm guinea pig zero who <laughs> keeps hating her job. So can I find the answer to make it so people don't hate their jobs and they can stay engaged and productive and kind of live a life where they thrive, not just going to work as like a, I don't know, something that we have to do every single day and just get through it. <laughs> oh, makes sense. And, and sounds like uh, a good thing to figure out and a, a good direction to, to go. And so now you say, okay, I'm going to go out on my own, start my own business, do my own thing and help people to be more engaged and do that. Now, how do you, you know, I think that's a great area and certainly, you know, higher employee engagement can be beneficial to businesses. It can be beneficial to the individuals and it's all around a, a great thing. Now, how do you go about building a business around that? Or in other words, how did you kind of go out and figure out who's your customer, who's your client, how you can get people to pay you for what direction to go and all those things and kind of how did that uh, or transition in the journey? Yes. Yeah, so initially when I went out, um, I was fortunate that those who were kind of private sector healthcare, when they found out that I left the big employer in the area, um, kind of reached out to hire me. And I started to do basically back to old school kind of HR journalist work with some sort of organizational development consulting. So very close to what I was doing in my previous job, but just with these organizations. And that kind of gave me some breathing room to figure out how I was going to answer this question that I kind of had put out there as my purpose for starting this business. And um, like I mentioned earlier that I kind of used myself as the initial guinea pig. I, I still recognize that even though I started my own business, I still was at a level of disengagement, like with life and even with work, like there was just a level of like, I don't know, of 
of kind of like ick <laughs> that was kind of instilled with just certain things that was triggered routinely, um, like work that I just didn't want to do and I couldn't get hyped up about. And so I started to look at everything that possibly could have to do with why it would be that way. So whether that's physical well-being, so I was working with personal trainers and nutritionists, like if it's something around those lines, mental health, psychology, looking at sociology. This was when uh, Dr. Brene Brown's books were starting to get some um, traction too. So I was really diving myself into her work about vulnerability and shame and, and piloting, piloting that within organizations. And there was things that were being productive uh, but they weren't creating significant shifts in my perspective, not even within me. Like I would basically see a shift for a short term and then it would go back. And so I literally then became just like obsessed with saying yes to any kind of weird opportunity that kind of got presented. So if somebody was like, hey, you want to come to my church event and like attend this leadership workshop, I'd be like, okay, yeah, sure. Let's go see what they got and what they're coming up with. And looking at all these tools and seeing if they were worthy of being integrated and then sometimes piloting them within some of my clients um, and seeing what would happen. And like I said, positive results, but nothing significant that would be worthwhile to start kind of, you know, tooting your own horn and saying, oh, yeah, this is what I do. And I can really make a big difference for you. No, it sounds like it was a uh... Uh, a, a, a rewarding uh, direction to take your career as well as it was uh, one that uh, fit you and uh, gave you a, a, a ability to pursue what you were wanting to do. And so, so give us an idea, when did you kind of, when did you start in that direction and, you know, and how long have you been uh, building the business and continuing to grow it? Yeah. So I started um, nine years ago. So 2014 was when I officially made the leap and left my full-time career and went out on my own. And the first five years were spent kind of doing that journey of saying yes, while kind of treading water financially, doing the skills that I knew I could do from an HR perspective. Um, and, you know, the most recent thing that's been happening in the last four years uh, that actually kind of just came to a, a little mini conclusion actually last week um, is that the modality that I've been playing with is actually focused in alternative medicine and Chinese medicine. Um, and so once again, one of these weird <laughs> opportunities that I was just saying yes to was in this branch of Chinese medicine called medical Qigong. And what was fascinating was uh, the classical oriental theory around energy. Um, and it was playing with those energy concepts uh, that started to allow me to see very significant shifts, uh, not even in individual clients, but also playing with them in an organizational environment. So about four years ago, I, that was introduced to me. And about two years ago in my business, we've officially shifted. And I kind of say like I came out of the the woo-woo closet and said, hey, I found a modality that I'm willing to attach with my brand name and that we're actually focusing on managing the energy within workplaces and individuals and helping you facilitate and maximize that because I do believe that's a huge catalyst to engagement and also preventing burnout, which we are seeing the huge trend there. So yeah, nine years in the making <laughs> and I two years ago kind of figured out what I wanna be as a business. <laughs> Well, it's, uh, I always joke that, you know, someday I'm going to figure out what I want to be when I grow up. And it's, uh, you know, it'll probably be about the time that I retire or stop working because that's always evolving and changing. And it sounds like, uh, you know, as you continue to figure things out, the business evolves, it continues to improve yeah. and uh, go in a, a great direction. So, well, now as we've kind of uh, reached the present day of your journey um, and seeing where it's headed, uh, it's a great time to, to, to tr or jump to the two questions I always ask at the end of each episode. So we'll go to those now. So the first question I always like to ask is, along your journey, what was the worst business decision you ever made and what did you learn from it? The worst business decision that I ever made along my journey was right when I started. Um, I kind of went through this initial shock of being alone. Like I was always working with teams and in groups of people. And then I went to an office where I was just all by myself all the time. So I prioritized creating a position that I didn't even need. So for the first year, maybe even two years, I paid a full-time salary for somebody that I didn't even really need. Uh, it was almost like paying a friend. And so I think there's a real art on when you need to start having additional staffing resources. And this is coming from somebody who does HR for a living, but just don't get too 
quick to that. I think like there's, you'll know when that tipping point is and, and don't try to force it too early. No, I, I think that is, and that's a hard one, you know, or, a, or even if it's your day in and day out, it's when do you bring someone on? When can the business sustain it? Is it going to act or yeah. create the return? And, uh, and are you ready as an individual to do it? And there's just a lot of balance between everything in order to um, bring someone on and make sure it's a good situation for you and for them and for the business and everything else. So it sounds like, you know, it's an easy mistake to make, but a great one to learn from. Yes, Absolutely. <laughs> now, the, the second question I love to ask is now, if you're talking to somebody that's just getting into a startup or a small business, what would be the one piece of advice you should give them? Um, and I, I kind of hinted at this in my last answer, but, you know, one of the greatest things that I've learned is to not force anything. So I'm not going to say don't push for what you want. But if you really feel like you are dragging things up the mountain and everything's against you, like it's not the right direction. Like if there's anything that I've learned from being an entrepreneur, like the places that we're meant to go and the spaces we're meant to serve are going to flow. They're going to have like um, they're going to have almost a momentum with them when we find them. Uh, and if we're trying to make them happen and force them to happen, like let it go because it's usually that's a piece of the greater idea that you're meant to be of service to. And I, it took me a long time to realize that I always thought like the one idea I had had to be the idea. Um, and instead they're all evolving into the idea. But if you keep holding onto that one piece, you could really lose a lot of time and also lose a lot of confidence. Um, and also confuse a lot of your prospect prospective customers because you're can be like all over the place. <laughs> no, I think that's uh, definitely a great uh, great piece of advice and a great takeaway. So awesome! Well, now as uh, as we wrap up the uh, episode, if people want to reach out to you, they want to be a customer, they want to be a client, they want to be an employee, they want to be an investor, they want to be your next best friend, any or all of the above. What's the best way to reach out to you? Contact you? Find out more. Best way to reach out to me is via email. So email me at S-A-M-M, -M, yes, I'm Sam with two M's, at hrartcenter.com. And then you can also check out the hrartcenter.com to learn more about all these things that I was kind of hinting at to see what our latest evolution of business is. Awesome. Well, I definitely encourage people to reach out, make a new connection, great, uh, or, or support a great business, if nothing else, make a new best friend. So with that, thank you again, Sam, for coming on the pod podcast. It's been a fun. It's been a pleasure. Now, for all of you the listeners that are out there, if you have your own journey to share and you'd like to be a guest on the podcast, we'd love to have you. So just go to inventiveguest.com, apply to be on the show. A couple more things as listeners. Make sure to click share, subscribe, leave us a review. Helps us to reach even more startups and small businesses to help them along their journey to success. And last but not least, if you ever need help with your startup, your small business with patents or trademarks, um, just go to strategymeeting.com, grab some time with us to chat. We're always here to help. Well, thank you again, Sam, for coming on the podcast and wish the next leg of your journey even better than the last. Thank you, Devin.